Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated. You join me in the aftermath of the conquest of the Isle of Man on at least the second, if not third, attempt. And uh, quite often, there have been ten-minute-long intros at the start of these episodes detailing the convoluted political situation in existence. Not so today. We start off straight into the action. Flansina is going to get rid of that penalty that he has for having too few spouses by marrying a insular Bavarian. There is a strand of insular Christianity in Bavaria and Savoy at the moment. Thankfully there is, or uh, it'd be very hard for us to find any characters to marry. She is a schemer, and uh, she's intelligent. So we're going to send that proposal immediately. Now, in the last episode, I stood down the army. Towards the end of the, the episode, I stood down the army, which was a bit of a waste. We're going to raise the army again, and immediately put them on raiding. I want to see what we're going to do in terms of splitting them, because we're going to send them up into the Isles. And if we just come and look, the Isles are pretty weak in terms of strength at the moment, so we are indeed, we're going to split them. After all the work that the poor woman has done, we have here an intelligent schemer, Grey Eminence. And what we're going to do is make her our primary spouse. So poor Enid, after all she has suffered through, after all she has suffered through, we are going to relegate her. She will uh, remain as our uh, physician. But of course, we are sleeping with her uh, with her stepsister. We've had three children, and that's been uh, that's become known in the court and has uh, has affected our relations with our wives. But we are going to make this new wife, this new fancy shiny wife, our primary wife. I've always said a Trilly is a great place for the readings. Uh, we're going to try and hit Alicia with something entertaining. So she has high stewardship. I think that maybe links to entertaining. It doesn't. Oh no, it doesn't. But Urgust has suggested something. I think that was something religious, was it? It was the, the first option. And she immediately perks up. I should have thought of that. Scotland, quite helpfully has, or I should say the Isles, have recovered from our last raid. Now part of it is, um, I'm sure we won't be able to, to raid these areas down. Uh, one of the episodes uh, a while back, I was trying to raid West Riding, and there was a blue line around it, and I was sitting there for a while trying to figure out what was going on. I'm sure there were people, just like there is now actually, uh, just like this, I'm sure there were people sitting there screaming at the uh, at the computer, you can't raid there, and it took me ages uh, to to actually realize that there was a blue line. Um, so I presume I think that means that they are in a war, and they're allied to our vassals. So I don't think we can raid them in that scenario. So possibly it's something the same up here in these purpley regions, but uh, we're going to raid down Angus anyway. And then we'll come up here and uh, to the place next to it. I think it's fair to say, and nobody's going to disagree here, that this has been a toxic relationship from the start. The entourage of my lover, Countess Astrid, stops some way away from Tralee. Before I have time to send out an envoy, something is launched from their camp towards my castle. A mangled body, ravaged by disease, falls from the sky, skin marred by rashes and bumps that can be seen even from where I am standing. It lands with a squelch, spreading blood, intestines, and panic. So, I'm guessing that Astrid heard about Christina, and that she's not happy. We have three options, each as bad as the other. We could scoop her up, uh, launch the body right back. Countess Astrid loses 20 opinion of us and uh, becomes our rival. 
Can she still be our lover and our rival at the same time? The body should be studied. 50% chance that one of our courtiers uh, contracts the disease, but we get plus two learning. Or she will have a dignified burial. 40% chance that the entire earldom becomes ravaged by disease. The Earl of Desmond is actually on the outskirts of Tralee, so it's possible that she stopped at the Earl of Desmond Hotel and launched the body from there. Maybe that's what they mean. Maybe it's the hotel that's going to become ravaged by disease. For 10 years, I don't like that option. Uh, Flancina also is the man of tremendous faith and dignity. I'm thinking about this body should be studied. I do like the fact that we become rivals. <laughs> I think we're going to study the uh, the body, though. I think I think Flansina. I don't think Flansina. Again, like I said, he was going around with that stereo over his head the last time that he was in in West Riding, trying to win her back. Um, I don't. They, yeah, no, this is a toxic relationship. He really should. He really should. One of the two of them should put an end to this. But I think for now we're going to study the body and hope that none of our courtiers uh, contracts the disease. Our Archbishop, in his fancy new robes, has finished converting um, Gary. So we're going to we're going to see about uh, putting him somewhere else. Or maybe not. I think most of the places, most of our counties are actually converted, except for our new holding on the Isle of Man. Crack was 90, etc., etc., uh, interestingly enough, our decision to start um, researching the body that we found has given us enough learning that we are no longer losing uh, piety per month. I'm seeing a large army coming out into the ocean. It's hostile to us, so I'm going to see if we need to pull back that army that's marching north. I don't think so. Well, I think everything's A-OK. -okay. Uh, we also have our best raider in Angus, so he should actually uh, finish that down. Embahon, if I'm correct, is leading the army here. He is indeed. So he has the reaver ability, so he should finish um, He should finish sieging that area down quickly. Here is our daughter that we are raising to be a, uh, a spy master. So our daughter is already ambitious. Now we're going to leave her with the brave trait. I'm already beginning to see a future episode in which somebody tries to support her claims to the High Kingship. I can totally see this happening. Um, so yeah, she's ambitious and brave. What could possibly go wrong with that combination? We've just finished sieging down Angus. We move these guys up. The other guys haven't even reached their target yet and then we're probably going to skirt around here we'll see if we can raid um inverness i don't think we can but we'll come up into into um the northern tip of scotland anyway what's actually going on over here again like i said they're probably allied they're probably in a war allied to our vassals or something so as our army under Anbacon moves up onto a mountaintop. Uh, we were seeing an army of the Isles coming across, but instead they're sieging down this uh, this region in Inverness. Possibly what's actually happening is they're fighting... It looks like maybe they're fighting an independence war or something. Um, no, I'm not too, not too sure what's going on there. The filth, the depravity, the absolute scandal in this writing. Eamon de Valera wouldn't have put up with this if... Uh, if this game came out in his day. But we have succeeded in another seduction scheme. Helping this woman to get over her dead husband by getting under someone else, etc, etc, etc. To unite only to come apart, it's all part of life. So 20 opinion in our scheme to seduce. We won't take her as a lover. What could have possessed her? To throw a dead body into our castle. What What's going on in her head? Who could we ask? 
Who could we talk to? Who could we confide in and ask them, what the hell is going on in Astrid's head? It's great to see that her mother has been released from prison, from her sister's, uh, sister Asta's prison, our wife's stepsister. Do you know what? We could probably... We could probably ask Asta what's going on with Astrid. Why is she acting this way? The poor dude, the poor dude from the Isles, he's belting away in his drum and nobody else is joining in with him. I did, I did increase the, the volume a small bit. Maybe you can hear it, but maybe not. And he's, he's trying to, he's trying to get a, he's trying to get a chant going, but not, nobody's joining him. We're going to take our forces, our army here, and we're going to head for Dingwall. Now that's going to hit him. And start a fight. And you know what? I don't mind too much. Because this is the territory. This is... Um, I'm almost certain. Oh no, this is Inverness. Which is actually ruled by our um, acquaintance. Uh, uh, Mal uh, Malmfred. Um, so yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can help her to beat off these guys. That's not what I meant, but there you go. Gonna help her beat off the Isles. Take that as you will. Also, our second group is finished, so we'll move them up as well. They might actually end up coming in first of all. And you know what? If I can grab hold of them... I will redirect them over there to uh, to that place, which has a nice chunk of gold. Our big boy Brangan comes of age. He's useless, but sure, how bad? And there is his fiance. Oh God, you can see in that face she has hard things about her father-in-law's court. She. She knows. She knows things. They grow up so fast, and uh, we will send that proposal. And immediately on accepting, uh, we will demand her conversion. I was just about to say, God bless them. They they haven't realized the danger that they're in. Uh, the Isles didn't uh, withdraw from that battle. The actual Duchess of the Isles, the High Chiefess, is uh, is leading. A victory. Nothing. Nothing major uh, achieved, or nothing. I don't think there's any major losses or anything. Coney again heading up the list. There's. Um, Orgus and Felku and uh, Connell. They're doing something at least. They haven't gotten themselves killed. Connell is desperately bad, down at uh, just seven prowess. We are at one of our courtiers' feasts. Apparently, it is as boring as hell. We spot our spy master, Felku, uh, from across the room. We've a couple of different options. We could just grin and bear it and be bored and have a mental breakdown. Um, we could scream at her that she's a terrible host and everyone would like us, but I think what we'll do, because we did mention, we were talking to him about sexy sea monsters in the last episode, I think, so, um, we have a, a chance to, uh, to get to know him better and we can say, we could ask him how his new military career is going. And there we go, Felku has became our friend. So we're going to try and buy our way into our wife's stepsister's heart, our lover's sister's heart. Uh, we could get her a book. Doesn't seem that she has great, uh, doesn't have the, the highest learning skill. A seashell, a reminder of our first meeting. And that's if we think that she already feels something for us. I don't think she does. But um, what we could instead do is give her a handkerchief with my crest on it. And I presume... Probably some vomit. 
Um, and it might it might impress her because it's a symbol from somebody of my stature. So she has high diplomacy, and I think maybe that's what um, that's what she'd like. Nope, didn't like that. So we've made bad impressions on her. So here is poor old Scunlawn with his one hand after he lost uh, a hand fighting against the the Manx forces. Uh, I was just checking through his children here. So he has a son, uh, Trenka, I think. But um, his daughter is called Lasseriana, which is a... It's a name that's actually coming back into uh, into fashion a bit. I've seen people... I've heard people saying Laser Fiona, because people people look at it and just they just try and pronounce it as best they can. But it's actually a, a re it's an unusual uh, Irish name. It's not it's not very common anymore. But it's um, uh, it's actually a, a very beautiful name that is that is coming back a small bit. There's a bit of a kind of a a revival going on at the moment, and people are are using Irish names and they're moving away from the very common Irish names: Seamus, Sean, Maura. Um, and they're kind of looking for older names, um, which might be a bit more unusual, because you don't want to just have a room full of Sean's, a room full of Seamus, Seamus is, 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 is in, uh, in primary school. So uh, Lasserina, well certainly is one that's going to stand out, must be hell for a child called Lasserina going through customs or, um, or going on to secondary school or college and, and being asked constantly how to spell their name. Anyway... High Chieftain Scanlon, wouldn't it be wonderful if he owed me something, not out of fear, but out of gratitude, if we were to save him, for example, from the vicious bandits that are waiting right outside the gate, that I've also given handkerchiefs with my name uh, on it uh, to them. So, um, yeah, what we're going to do, so simple yet so convincing, we have to pay 50 gold, but we get that strong hook we've been searching for. And suddenly, that faction to install his sister has disappeared. So one faction down. One more guy who keeps making factions against us to go. We're going to see if we can fabricate a strong hook on our brother, High Chieftain Yaknon. So again, here is Flansena, drunk out of his mind, thinking that he's playing everyone off against everyone else. What he's really doing is just spending a lot of money. To try and impress his wife's stepsisters. And utterly ruin that family. So we've managed to siege down Ross and uh, take all their money. Ross, of course, is controlled by um, Dervigal and Kuken Volher. So we're going to have a bastard child. Well... The child of a bastard child of House Enail, uh, ruling there. I don't think it's going to contribute to my dynasty. I didn't, I didn't check this out enough. Uh, well, again, it depends what the uh, the realm laws are. I think, well, definitely, yeah, women can inherit. So even if it's a daughter, um, we'll have an Enail with a nice little silver tear ruling in Ross, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we visited them. Thanks for all the gold. We have to keep going. There's more gold to raid. Good luck. Talk to you later. Well now, this is a bit of a conundrum. A couple of episodes back, we were told that somebody was scheming to murder our champion, uh, Kilna, I think. And our spymaster has come to us and told us that he thinks it's um, Sterla. Again, not too sure how to pronounce that name. But this is our Norse knight who has recently become a berserker and ripped somebody's head off during our recent battles against the Manx. So what do we do here? Who are we going to support in this in this case? Um, here is Kilne with a prowess of 15. Here is our awesome uh, champion... He's down to an 18 now. Was I thinking of having him convert and... Um, no, he must have always been 18. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was 19 at one stage. But I mean, that Berserker trait is giving him plus 5. So what do we do here? I mean, they're both fantastic knights. Um, 
whether it's true or not, we we will not accuse him. Uh, he is exposed and goes free. I think that's exactly what we're going to do. We're not going to uh, we're not going to come down on either side here because these are two great knights that we want to keep um, alive and not murdering each other, murder other people. What exactly is he wearing? I think a curtain just fell on him. And just before that that murder update uh, appeared, I was saying, God bless the uh, the Isles. They're coming back to try and siege down Inverness again. They haven't noticed the fact that we're going to need to come out of here somehow. And we're also going to need to move these guys up. Probably get them up to Orkney. It'll be our first time raiding Orkney. They're going, they're, going, they're going to have to go through these guys again. Oh, you poor things. Um, so we'll get them up to Orkney. And once this raid finishes down, we'll get them up to Katniss. We're taking prisoners in, in sieges. We were told we took prisoners in, um, in the Manx War as well, but nobody showed up. We got no prisoners. So we actually have now gotten prisoners. So we have this woman here. She is the wife of the spy master of somebody up in Scotland. We will we'll ransom her. Again, this this poor Baba probably giving us all his uh, his pocket money to ransom this woman. Uh, we're being told that Chief Dis. Alfred or Alfred will not accept a um, she will not accept uh, she won't pay a ransom for this person so what are our options one of our options is to negotiate her release maybe make her convert maybe stay in our court another option would be to execute her I think we'll go with the third option which is to close this window, close this window, and close this window. So lots of really strange things going on here. 75 men are coming in to attack us. Oh no. And a much bigger army. Is that a Swedish army? It is. Oh, these guys are screwed. They're trying to fall back. They're trying to go in every direction and they can't. Lots of things have just happened here. And we have a meeting with Asta. So there's a, a joust we're passing by. Uh, Countess Asta's officers are milling about instructing young champions and we find Asta wandering among them. Whatever intentions I had, I don't even want to know what intentions Flanson had, her attention is clearly on her duties as the Lady of these Soldiers. And we have a couple of different options. We can go for impressing her thoughtful side, her thrifty side, or her malicious side. Definitely not a malicious bone in her body. She's trusting and patient and ambitious. She was in her... I'm, I'm thinking of going for this one because she was in her uh, Knights Templar cosplay there uh, a couple of sessions back. And it's it's also her appeal to her thoughtful side. So I think we'll, I think we'll go for that one. What it looks like has happened here is that our lover here in Inverness, was fighting actually against the Isles, the, the guys that, we're, um, that we've ended up uh, battling against, uh, against the tyranny of the Isles. They've lost that war. Now, our lover was taken prisoner on the 3rd of February. She was released on the 7th and was taken prisoner again on the 7th. So, uh, and by the looks of it, she is still in prison. Oh no, and her husband is dead. He had his head ripped off uh, just a few days ago. Or, um, uh, about a year ago. How time flies when you're having fun. I didn't realize that, A, our drinking binge has ended. I'm pretty sure it has indeed. Our drinking binge, our three-year drinking binge has ended last September. And also, uh, towards the end of 951, we gained the ability to invite champions again. Uh, so do you know what? I will tick this. Notify when this decision becomes available again. And uh, we will send the Herald to see if we can find at least three able-bodied men to serve as knights. And there you go. 
Asta did indeed enjoy discussions on military strategy, on how best to employ novice warriors, and uh, we've now gained smoldering chemistry with her. Oh, wait until Astrid hears about this. I had been thinking about maybe attacking uh, Sweden, or not attacking them, but raiding them, but we can see a substantial Swedish army wandering around here. Uh, just under 3,500 soldiers, so I don't think that's something we're going to do. While that battle is still going on, these guys have finished raiding, so I'll now send them up to Orkney. This was the, the army that I intended uh, having siege Orkney, but it uh, doesn't look like they're going to get that chance. Uh, Anne Bacon is not a great military commander, but again, we did have overwhelming numbers against them. We have a victory, and we give them a couple of wallops, and off they go. So I don't think there's anywhere else to actually siege down. Uh, we could siege down Inverness itself for seven. Uh, do you know what? While we're here, we as might as well. It's the one and only place. Let's let's uh, let's break down the doors and ask Manfred where she is, or how she is. I mean to say. Uh, Conal has been given the trait aspiring blade master uh, by training with. Uh, Kukarka. That palisade has finally been built in Tralee. Hopefully it will keep people out in future. Or it'll, it'll help to stop bodies from being thrown in over the wall of the, uh, the castle. I think we're going to leave this army in Inverness for a second. There's 721 troops coming up. Um, they're hostile to us because we raided them. We're almost finished raiding down Orkney. So I leave these guys here and they'll, they'll join up together the way... One of them doesn't get ambushed. No, Asta, no, you, you misunderstand. I'm I'm just trying to figure out why Astrid... Oh, no. The sting of rejection. I think this is the first time that, uh, that Flansena has, has been rejected. You are a perceptive man, Flansena, but I do not like you that way, says Countess Asta, and slowly shakes her head. Only God knows what the future might hold for us. Oh, yes, uh, of course. So there's Flans in his first rejection. Um, and that ends the scheme. Ends the scheme completely. Flans in a, is a sad, unhappy, drunk and depraved man. We go down into our prisons. Uh, to our prisoner, Ingrid, who has been here for just four months, we demand her conversion to insular Christianity. And we demand that she joins her court, our court. We go state that release. We watch what exactly is happening up here. Uh, our army is moving down from Orkney. Our wife has became pregnant. Uh, this is the only wife that we've had children with since um, since it became known that we were cheating with our pr then primary wife's stepsister. I must be the father, surely. No, Flansen is too paranoid for that. I think he would look into this discreetly. Even though the last time, the last time that we did this, that's what uh, got us into trouble with Enid and led us to the court of her stepsisters. So, Ingrid has accepted our demand. That, uh, that she join our court. She is generous. She is forgiving. Let's test that. Flansina has had better look with Norse women. He is stung by that rejection. And again, just like on the last occasion, we were... We were wrong to be suspicious of her. Of course the child is ours. But, um... You might be glad to know that she doesn't have a, a big extended family for Flansina to, uh, to be causing trouble amongst. Um, of course I trusted you all along, dear. And we lose some 25 opinion with her. So, those raiders aren't moving. Out comes the... The big hatchet or whatever it is that we're going to flake him across the head with. 
And do you know what? We won't even bother bringing up the other forces. We'll just uh, we'll just leave this army here and see and see how they actually get on. So Koning has been wounded. Uh, our Berserker champion has been wounded. And there we go. So Koning was wounded, Strula was wounded, and uh, I think some of our champions delivered wounds to the uh, to the enemy. So you can see we're down into very low numbers. Um, uh, Failku, my best friend in the whole world, 99. So we're seeing that we're getting even here's Taig, and we've already had one person uh, join already. So I think the first thing that we need to do is uh, probably just march these guys back into the straightest route back to to Irish soil. Hopefully they don't hit that army. Um, march them in the straightest route back into Irish soil and start electing or appointing new knights. An interesting French Catholic knight here. A novice hunter. He's hale. Cautious leader. Flexible leader. And a tough soldier. So we will recruit him and of course we're going to gain stress uh, because of this. And Taig Ufaril, nothing great, but, um, well, he's a skilled tactician, and he's 13 prowess, so I suppose you can't complain too much about that. And with those two appointments, uh, Urgus, one of uh, Rokon's sons, so he would be a brother to our best knight, uh, Koning. Uh, he is no longer serving, and uh, nor is Connell. Uh, the son of Dermid, one of, again, one of our greatest knights and greatest marshals who served Flansina the First and uh, assisted him on the circuit of Norway and um, I think led the majority of the battles against the, the, um, in the, the wars of the Italian crown. At least I think that's who his father was. It was indeed. There he was because he died of the bubonic plague way back in 911. So here is poor Ingrid, poor innocent Ingrid, who we have forced to join our court, uh, forced her to convert to insular Christianity, and now Flan Sinna is attempting to seduce her. And again, probably a good idea that we figure out uh, what it is that she likes, so our spies will uncover this in no time. It's only when I go to marry people off that I find out about um, some of the, the tragedies at court. If, if I was to try and pin all of the characters that I'm interested in, I'd be getting pop-ups every five seconds. So here's Orla, our lover. No, she's not our lover. We didn't take her as a lover. She was a lover of our uncle, Orkaed. We married her off to one of our knights. This is a son of Ambacon, one of our great... Uh, rulers at the moment are one of our great uh, military figures. He's a younger brother, or he's a stepbrother, I believe, of um, Dovdaleha. And we married Orla to him. Now, he has died just in the last year from his wounds. I think wounds that he received in the, uh, the battles against the Manx, I think. So we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna marry Orla. Well, we want to see what the the chances of children are between Orla and Taigu Faril, and um, so it's a medium chance of of uh, marriage. So we will send that proposal, and this is her third time being married. Now it's the third night as well that she's actually been married to the poor thing. Uh, so it'll be the third husband. One was killed during the siege in Athlone. And now if we come and look at Orgist. Uh, so here is Ian Bacon. And yeah, both of Ian Bacon's sons have died in service to us. And all that he is left with now, I won't say all that he's left with now, is his daughter. Uh, there is Mora, Nickri and Graffador, his wife. She already had um, a son with a previous husband. Dovdaleha, her previous husband was killed in battle, so she's lost a husband. 
She lost, her husband was slain, and one of her sons died from his injuries, and then of course another son was slain in a duel, possibly with her brother, Kukurka, when Kukurka Moore, when he was training, was training the armies. My god, what loss that family has suffered. What loss and service to the crown of Ireland, which at the moment is being worn by a big happy drunk. Apparently, Ingrid is a woman of fine taste. So we've gained a, a budding interest, or she has a budding interest in us, maybe. Our men set foot in Ireland with a big heap of money. 81 gold and... Uh, 60 gold, and the prestige for that as well. Um, the problem now is that we can see all of Scotland is pretty much in flames. Um... We can see there's wars going on here. We can see flames around here. We can't attack these areas. We can see flames down around here. So I think our military campaign for now is at an end. Um, well, it's almost at an end. What we will do very quickly, actually, is we will uh, merge the armies. We will place them under poor old Ian Bacon. All the, the, the loss that he has suffered. Then again, maybe he's proud. That his sons have um, have given their lives in service to Ireland. 15 gold here. We're going to siege this area. That's already been sieged. There's a lot of gold here in the Swedish lands. But like I've already said, the Swedes have all oh, their... They're recovering their, their losses. Um, so yeah, we're going to siege down this area. And then we're going to make a run for it. And I think it's fair to say... I threatened it a long time ago that Ian Bacon, we would get him to, to convert. I can't remember what he was. Was he Catholic always? Or was he some, something else? Our primary wife has just became pregnant. I said we'd get him to convert. And you know what? I think we will leave him with his with his faith. Um, his children all died insular. I think we'll leave the poor man alone. And we will not try and force him to convert. We do not believe that he... We think that he... he practices Easter on the wrong day but you know what we let the poor man with his beliefs in um, I won't say the final days of his life but he's 60 years of age we've seen a lot of our rulers die between 61 and, and 66 and uh, he has outlived his two brave military sons who died making money for the kingdom for us to spend predominantly on women we could try to get a weak hook on Lachnan. Again, not of much interest to us. This has all been a mistake, surely. And uh, we will start again. And rather quickly, we have finished our siege. We move back into Irish soil. And possibly, that might have been the last ever time that Anne Bacon, uh will lead the armies. Because it's probably going to be a substantial period of time before we can uh, siege anything down again. I think both of his sons died. Did they both die? No, one of them died in the Manx War, and I think um, they either both died in the Manx Conflict, or they died in our efforts to uh, to siege down territory. So we will... Uh, there's hostile armies around. We can either... Do you know what? We'll give the man one last run. We'll give the man one last run. He's brought back the money to us, and we'll send him in to, to hunt away this army. The way we can actually stand it down. I didn't even know they were building stuff on the Isle of Man. That seems to have happened before we, uh, we conquered the island. Here's an interesting guest that has is, that is, uh, arrived in the court. Simple enough victory for the poor man. We've gotten a pop-up that our cousin Gronia, uh, one of Kukurka's daughters, was captured in a uh, a siege in, in Lincoln. And that's actually where Eamon de Valera was in prison. Uh, escaped from Lincoln Jail in 1919. Um, 
she's betrothed, I think. So she's one husband, two, three, and this will be her fourth husband. Who did we marry her to first of all? Oh, there was actually, uh, we got a pop-up. I think I remember the, the Velf family arrived at our court at some stage. And uh, I can't remember. That was one of our knights. This was actually the knight that pushed over Grian Graffador. I think. Not entirely too sure. I can't even remember now. He pushed somebody over anyway and we made him a, made him a knight. And he was... Uh, we can't really we can't really see what happened to him. He was slain in battle in 938. And um but yeah, she's left our court. I remember she was serving somebody as a knight for uh, for a period of time, but she's been taken prisoner. And Ian Bacon has just gotten the the forces back onto Irish soil before uh, we're informed that we have a son. I have no idea how to pronounce that name, so we'll go for something Another Angus. I know we had an Angus a couple of generations back. Do you know what? We'll go with Angus. May you grow to be strong and wise, my son. And we take a brief pause to stand down the army and to recognize Ambacon's tremendous service to us and the loss of his two sons. They did a little dab there, or a little kind of a, a shoulder... Um, a little clean of the shoulder, just like your man, whose name I've completely forgotten in the Star War movie, The Creepy Uncle. An unfortunate end to the career of a man who deviled the reigns of two Irish kings. Okay, one of those reigns was quite short. But Frenchman has been conquered by the French in 951, I believe. And with that, the Welshman no longer controls any land. He's gone wandering. He'll always be the Welshman, a Frenchman to us, because I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, even though um, Frenchman is no more. And I think what is fitting, though, is that we would come up here to the Earldom of the Isle of Man. So the duchy was destroyed after he was deposed. Uh, it would have cost us 100 and, uh, 250 to usurp. It's now down to a bargain basement, 125 to create, and I think it's quite fitting that, uh, that we use some of the money, most of the money, that was taken in the last raid on Scotland, led by Ian Bacon, who lost two of his sons. Uh, also, at, le at least one of his sons died in the conquest of, uh, of the island, so I think it's only fitting that we create the duchy Keep it ourselves, obviously. We will create that title, gain some prestige, and uh, Flancina, I think for the first time, has become a a duke. I don't think he had any any titles up to this point in time. Um, all he had was the Kingdom of Ireland and the uh, Earl of Desmond, a small little hotel outside Tralee. But now he has the Duchy of Man. And uh, controls the actual island itself. In the sometimes helpful issues tab up here, we are being told um, that we can increase opinion. That Orgus's opinion of us is low. So here is uh, Chieftain Orgus. And uh, yeah, what we will do is we will start uh, a sway scheme to increase his, um, his opinion of us. Oh, whoops, I went for Fabricate Hook. Oh well, how did I make that mistake? In terms of the succession, which is something that I have started to take a lot more interest in due to Flan Sinna's alcoholism and high levels of stress, we're still supporting our bestest best friend in the whole wide world, Kukurka Moore. He has three votes, or he has at least um, three, three voting strength. Um, his rival, Koning, our leading knight, is on nine. There's not a lot we can do at the moment to support him. However, we'll see that his younger brother, so Kukurka Moore's younger brother, slash stepson, 
Uh, Scanlon is actually supporting our younger brother, uh, Turin. And I saw this in the the last, uh, or at the end of the last episode, um, after the episode ended, that Turin has become a um, a bishop for somebody. It says that he's located in Desmond, but um, oh, he's in he's in um, Conal's court in Desmond. But we're in Desmond. I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, he's uh, he's Conal's. He's the Bishop of Munster, basically, and um, that's who that's who uh, Scanlon is um, supporting. So what we're going to do is using our strong hook, we're going to force Scanlon at least to shift his vote to his brother uh, for the next five years. It's not going to do a huge lot. Uh, it doesn't. It brings him up from three to five, but. Um, uh, Koning is still on nine, including the vote that um, that uh, that uh, Kukurka is giving him. Is it possible that Kukurka's vote strength is five? Oh, Kukurka. So what we might have to do, I wasn't planning on doing this, but we might actually have to fabricate a hook on Kukurka and get him to support himself. Oh... Our poor lover, Malmfred, she has been stripped of her holdings in Inverness, so she lost a war against the High Chiefess uh, not that long ago, and uh, Inverness has been revoked from her, so she's now just down to one county. But uh, you can see that she has, uh, she has two sons and a daughter by Flansina. Uh, at least I think this is also our son. Do you know what? I don't know anymore. Um, Sigrid is definitely ours. And then I don't actually know about the other two. I think I think they're both uh, Flansinas as well. So none of Flansinas' children, who were being passed off as her uh, previous husband, Offigs, uh, none of them will inherit anything. So we might see in future, is there anything that we can do to help her? Uh, but for now, I think that's a good place to bring today's episode to an end with the the conquest, the liberation of Ireland. We kicked a man while he was down, and we kicked him a bit too hard because he's now lost everything. We went into Scotland and took all of their money, and we tried to hit on our wife's stepsister to make her other stepsister jealous. Yeah, these these episodes are uh, are getting are getting really weird. Flansina has been enjoying himself far too much. Has he? Has he though? That stress level is still is still fairly high. It was at 199 either at the start of this episode or the previous one. Now it's at 180. It's not it's not really going down. So uh, Flansina is living life on the edge. He's enjoying the perks of power, but he's enjoying them maybe a bit too much. Uh, how much longer can the vassals put up with his shenanigans? Then again, he is he is leading a couple of military conquests and things like that. So we're going to see what can be done on the the next episode. Uh, what Flansina's immediate goals are going to be? It's going to be an interesting one because we're seeing much of Britain at the moment is um, is unraidable. It's either been raided down already or it's Sweden. So we're gonna we're gonna have to see what we can do. Uh, the guys who've been conquering, the guys who've been conquering um, Gardariki, they've taken another county. So they they only had one county. They only had this one. Now they've taken the one above it. Uh, Novgorod is barely hanging in there, but it's lost all access to the uh, the sea, and it's hanging in down there as well. So Novgorod is a is a land power. The the Gardariki have been made a uh, into a land power. And uh, we still have a Catholic Bavarian who is going to be succeeded. It'll be the first time that a Catholic Bavarian will actually succeed. Uh, this guy converted after he um, after he came to power. But yeah, the Novgorod has uh, has collapsed utterly. So big, big happenings in Britain and Ireland and uh, in the rest of the world from the point of view of our interests in the uh, the Norse, but of course uh, Sweden and that terrifying coalition that they can put together if i can find it they've became even stronger or have they they have 
They're now up to about 11, 12 and a half, approaching 13,000. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, what we can do in future. Uh, thank you very much for joining me on this episode, and I will talk to you all on the next one.